Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam by Macaulay's method. The span of the beam is given as 6 meter. This beam carries a concentrated movement 150 kN meter at a distance of 4 meter from the left support. The concentrated movement is acting in the clockwise direction. In the Macaulay's method, we have to make sections. In this beam, there are two different parts, AC and CB. So, we have to make two sections, one in AC and one in CB. You can see that I have made two sections, one in CB and one in AC. I have made both of the sections at a distance of X from the point B. Now from the point B, we are going to find the movements about the sections. In this case, we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is X. Let us assume that MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. The concentrated movement is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. We know that with the movement we should not multiply the distance but in the Macaulay's method we have to multiply the distance. There should be no change in the movement. Suppose in the point C there is a point load. We have to take this distance this distance is x minus 2. We can apply the distance, but we know that there should be no change. In this case, in the power, we have to apply 0. We know that if you apply the power 0 to any number, it will be equal to 1. So, 150 into 1, still we will get 150. So, there will be no change. Now let us equate mxx with eid square y upon dx square. Now let us integrate this on both of the sides. To integrate these two terms we can use this formula and to integrate this term we can use this formula. In this member there is no x so to integrate we have to just multiply with the x. When we integrate x it will be x square upon 2. C1 is the constant. When we integrate this, we will get this. x minus 2, the whole power 1 upon 1, it will be x minus 2. Now let us integrate this on both of the sides. When we integrate x, it will be x square upon 2. When we integrate x square, it will be x cube upon 3. In this term, there is no x. So we have to just multiply with the x. C2 is the new constant. When we integrate this, we will get this. 1 upon 2, it will be 0 0.5. 2 into 3, we will get a 6. We can eliminate this 2. Here it will be 75. We know that in the point B, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So when x is 0, the slope dy upon dx will be 0. Let us apply both of these in this equation. When we do that, we should not consider this. For C1, we will get 0. Also, we know that in the fixed end, there will be no deflection. So, when x is 0, y also will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. When we do that, we should not consider this term. In this way, for C2, we will get 0. In the slope and deflection equations, let us apply the values of C1 and C2 so that we will get these two equations. We know that in the point A there is a fixed support. So when x is 6, the slope dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of these so that we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 1. Also, we know that in the fixed support there will be no deflection. So, when x is 6, the deflection y will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them so that we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 2. 
Now there are two equations. We can take a calculator and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. For RB, I have got 100 upon 3 and for MB, I have got 0. In these two equations, let us apply the values of RB and MB so that we will get these two equations. Let us keep the slope equation as number 3 and let us keep the deflection equation as number 4. In the question, we have been asked to find the maximum deflection. The maximum deflection will occur in the portion AC but we do not know exactly. In this case, we can apply one condition. When the deflection is maximum, the slope will be 0. Let us take the slope equation. For the slope dy upon dx, let us apply 0. We can use the calculator and get the x values. We will get two values. This value is not applicable. So when x is 3, the maximum deflection occurs. In this equation, let us apply x is 3. The value of Ei is given in the question as 10,000. Let us apply that. For the maximum deflection, we will get a 7.5 mm. Now let us find Ra. We have found Rb. It is acting upwards. We know that in this beam, there is no load. In this case, the values of Rb and Ra will be same. But the direction will be different. Since Rb is acting in the upward direction, Ra should be acting in the downward direction. Now let us take a moment about A and find MA. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 100 upon 3 into 6. The concentrated moment is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Let us assume that MA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it is also negative. For MA, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us find the shear force values. From the point A and towards the point B, I am going to find the shear force values. In this case, we have to use right hand side rule. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using the rule, we can find the shear force values. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now let us find the bending moment values. Let us find the bending moment at A. In the point A, we have MA, which is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be positive. Now let us find the bending moment at just left of C. The moment MA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. RA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4. Finally, we will get minus 83.333. Now let us find the bending moment at just right of C. For that, with this value, we have to add the concentrated moment 150. Since the concentrated moment is acting in the clockwise direction, it should be applied as positive. Finally, we will get 66.667. We know that in the point B, the bending moment is zero. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. This is the point of contraflexure. In this point, let us make a section and find the distance. In that point, I have made a section at a distance of x from the point A. In this section, we can find the moment and we know that it is a 0. Using that concept, we can find x. Let us apply that. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.